After a season of prelude, we have come to the show everyone wants to see. The games that will decide who wears the crown in college football. Here in Atlanta, the top dog Tigers have ridden the Heisman hero to the number one spot in all the land. But the Sooners have a season champion of their own. And when the dust settles, we will have solved one half of the championship game puzzle. In the shadow of the College Football Hall of Fame, it's Oklahoma and LSU in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. You're watching the 2019 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. And welcome, everyone, to the Booking.com kickoff as we get ready for the first of today's two college football playoff semifinals between number one LSU and fourth-ranked Oklahoma. The Tigers making their first ever appearance in the playoff. Oklahoma, it's third straight, fourth in the last five years. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us for one of the great days of the year on the American sports calendar. And in the six year history of the playoff, Todd, a lot of people believe this is the strongest field of four. Three undefeated teams for the second year in a row. This group, a combined 51 and one. No yeah. argument. They're the four teams that deserve yeah. to be here, and each blessed with an outstanding quarterback. Yeah, it's the four best teams in college football led by the four best quarterbacks in college football. In the case of Joe Burrow, he won the Heisman Trophy in a landslide, and deservedly so. He yeah. brings a lot to the table. Phenomenal season. He plays with such great toughness and composure, and when you play, against Joe Burrow you've got a real dilemma as Georgia found out a very good Georgia football team in the SEC championship how do you choose to go at this guy if you rush three and drop eight and have a spy on him he reads that he'll just wait he'll be patient he'll move in the pocket until one of his talented wide receivers uncovers in this case Jamar Chase in the back of the end zone for a touchdown so maybe you try to pressure him you bring a linebacker he gets free but Burrow sees it and the ball's out of his hands before any damage is done this time a linebacker gets free Burrow eludes him and does what he's done all season beats teams with his legs when he scrambles with the football and even if you have the perfect gimmick defense you drop a lineman right into the throwing lane still not quick enough to get there to beat Joe Burrow he has just been phenomenal all year and the Heisman Trophy runner-up was Jalen Hurts now the quarterback at Oklahoma after three years at Alabama the Crimson Tide in the playoff all three of those years he's had a terrific adjustment to life in Norman Oklahoma absolutely you know he got better as a quarterback every year of his career and he's even better this year particularly when it comes to throwing the football he's just really blossomed under Lincoln Riley he's only been here less than a year much more efficient throwing the football particularly throwing the football down the field but he's always got that threat as a runner he is a guy who is a unique runner from the quarterback position because he's big he's physical has unique durability he'll have to be a big factor in the run game tonight but I also think for Oklahoma to win he's going to have to make some tough throws against tight LSU coverage the profile of Jalen brought to you by booking.com he's no stranger to Atlanta as a matter of fact he's had some of the biggest moments of his career in this building the question about both of these teams during a lot of the year was on defense LSU for a while supplanted by Ohio State as number one in the CFP rankings because of questions about the defense they feel they've answered that late in the year Oklahoma Oklahoma light years better yeah. defensively than the last two years. New defensive coordinator Alex Grinch, Grinch has made a huge difference. He's changed their mindset, their mentality. All their defensive numbers are much better, particularly pass defense where they were last in the country last year. They've got to do a good job trying to take the ball away tonight against LSU. That's not been one of the best things they've done. As LSU takes the field. And they're back in the college football playoff again. They have the advantage of experience in the playoff. This, however, is not familiar territory for the Sooner Schooner. They've been playing football at Oklahoma since 1895. This is the first game ever for the Sooners in the state of Georgia. We have a reporter on each sideline. Let's start on the Oklahoma side. We welcome Laura Rutledge. Hello, Laura. Hey, Sean. And it's going to be all hands on deck for Oklahoma with three suspensions and one key injury. But Lincoln Riley told me right before this game, we are built for this. He said we wouldn't be here if we didn't have guys stepping up in big moments all year long. You see this here. Ronnie Perkins, the defensive end, is the sacks leader on this Oklahoma team. He will be replaced by LeBron Stokes, 
who is the Big 12 Defensive Newcomer of the Year. And DeLaren Turner-Yell dealing with that injury to his collarbone will be replaced by Justin Broyles, an Oklahoma kid who says he's ready for this huge spotlight. Here's the one thing to watch out for with these four guys. They're all key contributors on special teams, so other fellows are going to have to step up there. Let's go to Holly Rowe with LSU's head coach. Well, Coach Orgeron, you're a defensive line coach at heart, so what does your defense have to do to contain Jalen Hurts' multiple weapons? We have to get penetration. We have to make plays in the backfield, set edges, and stay in our pass rush lanes. I saw Clyde edwards helaire came out and run some routes. What do you expect from him to contribute today? He's going to play in certain situations. He's ready to go. He told me ready to go, so we're going to see what he can do. Thank you, sir. Go Tigers. Avery Atkins is the kickoff man. And back deep for OU, Trey Brown. Oklahoma, not a good kickoff return team. Averaging less than 17 yards per return. They're 116th in the country. And as usual, it's a touchback for Atkins. 84% of his kickoffs, touchbacks. Jalen Hurts, quarterback, Houston, Texas. 38-3 and three in his career as a starter, combining Alabama and Oklahoma. Powerful, 218-pounder. Looking to throw and in trouble. Wrapped up and down in the arms of Caleb on Chason. Well, Chason is working against a tight end. He's working against Braden Willis, and he's their best pure pass rusher. This was maximum protection. They kept the tight end in. They tried to throw it down the field, and LSU, with tight coverage, led to that sack. Loss of six. On the ground with Kennedy Brooks, and he's stacked up. By a fired up Tiger defense led by the best defensive back in the country, the Thorpe Award winner, safety Grant Delpit. Here's a look at today's Chick fil A impact players. Well, CeeDee Lamb is obviously their go to receiver. They want to get him the ball. He's great after the catch. Kennedy Brooks, outstanding runner. And then on the defense, you just mentioned Grant Delpit and the true freshman Derek Stingley Jr., their best pure cover guy on the outside. Third down, nearly 17. Clearly a pro LSU crowd here in SEC country. Very conservative play call and nothing doing for Kennedy Brooks. And right away you see the difference in how LSU is going to try to play this Oklahoma offense. They're going to try to close space in the running game and they're going to close space in the passing game by getting up in press coverage. Sean, that was third and 17 and it was still press man to man by LSU on defense. They do not want to give free access to these wide receivers, particularly CeeDee Lamb. Derek Stingley, the freshman back for the punt from Reeves Munshaw. Out of New Braunfels, Texas, had an excellent Ooh. first year as a starter. And right on cue, a shank. And that'll come up short of midfield. Joe Burrow, 6'4", senior from Athens, Ohio. First man in SEC history to throw for 4,000 yards and 40 or more touchdown passes. Set the SEC single season marks for passing yardage and passing touchdowns. Chris Curry gets the starter running back. Wide open is Thaddeus Moss. Shot down after a first down to the 25-yard line. Pat Fields, the safety, made the stop for OU. And a little RPO. That was run blocking up front by the LSU offense. Good play fake by Curry. And that's Joe Burrow just reading it and getting the ball to Thaddeus Moss. And I think Thaddeus Moss, in the absence of Clyde edwards helaire who I don't think is going to play at all, I think Moss is going to have a bigger role in the offense today. Ed Ogeron told us they'd line up wide receivers in the backfield. They did there with Jamar Chase over the middle. A gain inside the 20 to Terrace Marshall. Just as soon as I say that, here comes Clyde edwards helaire right now. And I don't think they'll miss him in the running game nearly as much as the passing game. 50 catches, most of that in the second half of the year. First team all SEC after the play fake, the slant, the catch, and the touchdown for Justin Jefferson.
They scored 97 percent of the time in the red zone. Best in the country. And the extra point up and good by Cade York. So a flawless start for LSU. A three and out on defense. And after the short punt, the quick strike offense gets them ahead seven to nothing. There's Avery Atkins to kick off again, another bomb. Down to the sideline, here's Holly. Well, guys, a tragic situation unfolding for the LSU football family today. Earlier today, we found out that a small aircraft departed from Lafayette, Louisiana, bound for this game, and aboard that flight, among five passengers that have died, was LSU offensive coordinator Steve Ensminger's daughter-in-law. Carly McCord was a 30-year-old sports reporter from New Orleans. She got on that flight early today. Her husband, Steve Jr., was already here for this game. Coach Ensminger is going to coach this game today, and Ed Orgeron had to be the one to tell him the news, guys. A very difficult day in Tiger family. Oh, wow. Unspeakably sad. Can only imagine what's going through his heart and mind right now. Hertz takes off running. Gets about five, and I think you and I believe that's the key to the game on offense yep. for... Oklahoma can they block well enough it's a very big but not particularly mobile defensive line for LSU can they block well enough to get Hurts going yeah and they've got to try to create angles that's what this offensive line and the way their tight ends and H backs block they really create excellent angles they're not necessarily an overpowering offensive line but they do understand angles and that creates creases and space in their run game their offensive line won the Joe Moore Award last year, but brought back only one starter, the center, Creed Humphrey, who's outstanding. The other four were all NFL draft picks. There's plenty of room for Hurts. And he has the first first down of the game for the Sooners. He was blasted at the end by the freshman Mo Hampton. Well, Caleb on chase on is going to take an inside move. He's going to go inside, which plays right into the hands, as that's what Jalen Hurts reads. It's a zone read. He sees all that space to the outside. That's a defense that didn't have the edge properly defended. That's what Ed Orgeron told Holly before the game. They had to be good setting the edge, particularly against the quarterback run. Eight and a half to go, first quarter. Hurts turned in the direction of nobody, lofts it out in the flat, caught by Braden Willis. And he's close to midfield. He's taken over. As the primary target, it was essentially the tight end position after they lost Grant Calcaterra, a first team yeah. all conference last year, had to give up football because of recurring head injuries. That was a big loss. They go quickly. Plenty of time for Jalen. Single coverage. Deep ball up for grabs and caught by CD Lamb near the goal line with Jacoby Stevens in coverage. See, by putting him in the slot, they got him on the safety instead of the corner, Stingley. That's a matchup that favors Oklahoma. Stevens is better around the line of scrimmage. He's not a cover guy. Jalen Hurts read it. The formation created the matchup, and they exploited it with the deep throw. Hurts likes to run it in down here. He gave it to Kennedy Brooks. Touchdown! He powered his way in. After the 51-yard pass play, got them to the doorstep. Bread and butter play of the Oklahoma offense is the counter play where they pull the backside guard and the tackle. Watch the back start that way and fold it back inside and power his way into the end zone. He starts by following it. There's penetration at the point of attack, and he wisely uses his vision to cut it backside to get the touchdown. Gabe Berkic, red shirt freshman on to try to tie it. We waited till after he kicked it to say he still has not missed a kick all year. Field goals for extra points. Game, by the way, does not believe in the announcer jinx. C.D. Lamb was a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. He thought he was the best receiver in the country. Jamar Chase won it. Brooks did the rest midway through the first quarter. Tied at seven. As Gabe Burkich kicks off, showing his strong leg. <laughs> out of Chardon, Ohio, just east of Cleveland. Here's one. Tied at seven. Midway through the first quarter, LSU back on offense. They bring pressure off the corner. Burrow got it off. 
to Justin Jefferson. He weaves across the 40. Justin Bryles in there for the injured Delarian Turner yell missed yeah. a tackle and Pat Fields came to his aid and it's off coverage too so it's an easy throw and catch on that out route against off coverage and the missed tackle just adds insult to injury and after the play fake the quick strike Burrow on target as usual and across midfield with another first down goes Justin Jefferson to the Sooner 43. Now LSU is getting away with getting some linemen downfield. That's about the third RPO they've run. That time, Adrian McGee, the left guard, was clearly downfield on that slant route. They're showing run, and then Joe Burrow is choosing to pass off of it. Here comes pressure from Oklahoma. Burrow, plenty of time. On target to Terrace Marshall, circles to the 35-yard line. Parnell Motley's had a very good year. Cornerback made the tackle. Senior out of Washington, D.C. Clyde Edwards E. Lair came into the game, and then he went wide to the left near the numbers near sideline. This usually signifies they want to throw the ball to inside receivers. You've got Jefferson and Chase on that side together. Second and ten, they're in field goal range. Burrow checks it down to Jefferson. Wrestled down about a yard and a half short of the first down by Justin Broyles. Here's Holly. Terrace Marshall Jr. just went through a battery of tests on the sideline after that hit to his head. They did a bunch of index fingers to the nose balance tests. He did pass all those tests and will return. All right, Holly, thank you. On the handoff, Edwards Elier gets the carry. Nothing wrong with the hamstring on that run. As usual, he pulls his way with a positive gain inside the 10-yard line, and they're going to huddle up very quickly. Ed Ingram in there starting at left guard with a powerful block on that side. They get to the line in a blink of an eye, and it's Edwards Elaire again. Neville Gallimore and LaRon Stokes made the tackle. There was some debate, including on the ESPN airways, about maybe they should just rest him you know, they're a two touchdown favorite. Yeah. Rest for the national championship game. I thought that was a bunch of garbage well, myself. A hamstring is a tricky injury. If you tweak it, then you set yourself back. But obviously, he feels good. They've trained him. He just has not had any practice. But obviously, the treatment has worked, and he feels pretty good at this point because it did not show any signs on those two runs. Lamar Chase now lined up on the left hip of Burrow. He feels the rush so well and throws for a touchdown. Terrace Marshall, after the quick checkup, when he hit his head, back on the field into the end zone, it's 13 to seven. The first look on a play like that is gonna be to Jamar Chase. He's in the backfield. You wanna try to get him isolated on a linebacker or a safety, they covered that. And you see how these receivers are able to adjust and move with Joe Burrow. As he moves in the pocket, they adjust their routes, and that's exactly what Marshall did for his 11th touchdown catch of the season. There's the 18-year-old freshman kicker, Cade York, with the 29-year-old holder, Zach von Rosenberg, and the extra point is good. And LSU goes back on top. Joe Burrow, eight out of 10. And two touchdowns. It's Charleston Rambo back now for the kickoff from Avery Atkins. They had Trey Brown back there previously. It usually doesn't matter. This guy is a touchback machine. Low line drive. They want to cover the kick. And here comes Rambo. That's great the speed. squid kick. Looks like a mistake now. It's the kicker, Atkins, the sophomore out of Auburn, Alabama, who had to run him down. Jalen Hurts pressured immediately and throws it away at the feet of C.D. Lamb, the big middle of that defensive front. Tyler Shelvin at 6'3", 346, put the pressure on. We talked to Dave Miranda yesterday, the defensive coordinator, Todd. He said all of our guys up front are nose guards. Yeah, they all look the same. They're all 300-pound guys. They play. They rotate three different guys in. They even have a set for this game because of the run game where they'll have five guys that look like that in at the same time in short yardage. Miranda said Shelvin's our best defensive lineman with athleticism and quickness, and he displayed that at almost 350 pounds. They fake a reverse. And it is Hurts who wound up with the ball in his hand, batted down 
by Jacoby Stevens. Yeah, they went with a direct snap to Kennedy Brooks, and he handed the ball off to Hurts. They were trying to get the football again to Jalen Hurts. And good pressure defense. And, and right now, the plan that Dave Miranda wanted to try to do to, to squeeze space and take space away from this Oklahoma offense, for the most part, has worked. They did give up the long pass to CeeDee Lamb, but for the most part, they've been able to squeeze down on this Oklahoma offense. Hall of Famer Randy Moss here cheering on his son, the LSU tight end Thaddeus Moss, cheering on the defense right now, looking for a stop. And another three and out on third down and ten. They tried to bring pressure. Hurts running out of time. Just lofts it in the air, and they yank down the receiver. Stingley pulled down the receiver. There's still no flag on the near sideline. Jaden Hazelwood, the intended target. Marcel Brooks, part of a blitz. Yeah, he definitely grabbed him and altered his course. That that very easily and, and should have been pass interference. Stingley knew he was beat, and he's just trying to catch up. But at the end, the contact wasn't the problem. The fact that he grabbed the arm and pulled him away from the play, that's what has Lincoln Riley rightfully upset. Well, that is just a total whiff by the officials. And a big whiff at that. Reeves Munshaw is the putter. Stingley, who just got away with one, lets the ball roll out. Three minutes to go in an entertaining first quarter. National semifinal number one from the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Third down and two for LSU. They've twice led by a touchdown. Jamar Chase has been very quiet so far for LSU. Burrow. Plenty of time, running out of time, retreating. Murray tries to help rush as he reaches the sideline. He lobs it up, and it is caught by Terrace Marshall. My only question was, Terrace Marshall out of bounds? He was out of bounds, I think, and was not forced out. I guess you could say maybe. But then he comes back in and makes a catch. Trey Brown was in coverage. Matt, is it a, a difference of whether he was forced out? If he's forced out, he can come back in and make the catch, correct? Through the hole, Chris Curry. And he bounces off a hit for a few more yards. Down to the 35-yard line of Oklahoma. Run up 19 for Chris Curry. Really good job by the left guard in the center. Watch him turn the nose guard in there. The left tackle, Sadiq Charles, with a nice block. And that's what they like about Curry. He doesn't mess around in the hole. He is a north-south runner, runs with power. And he's giving him a little bit of a spark here running the football. One yard shy of his longest run of the season. Well, ideally, they'd like to get a big lead. Every team likes to get a big lead, but in their case, it would give them a chance perhaps to rest Edwards Hilaire. You got Brian Mead in here right now, too, in place of Kenneth Murray. And a big drop off there. Barrow avoids the rush. On target again. Justin Jefferson, the ball was up incomplete. out of bounds. He didn't catch it. Yep. Did not create uh, complete a football move after the catch. It was a good throw. He had it, but as he started to turn up field, just didn't secure the football. It's close, though. Yep, but wobbling around really the whole time as he took a look at Justin Broyles, who was approaching. He was wanting to stiff arm, it looked like, and he with his right hand, and he didn't secure the football with his left arm to make the catch. Well, that goes as an incomplete pass for Burrow. Now 10 out of 13 as he tries to set the single season completion percentage mark. And into the game at 77-9. That would be the record. Throwing deep. Has a man! Another touchdown! Jefferson hangs on this time for six points. Well, he didn't drop this one. Another beautiful throw. He's in the slot. It's off coverage again. And unfortunately, it's Justin Broyles again. The new safety. You get a safety matched up on a wide receiver. That's to your advantage. And Joe Burrow found the matchup, and he exploited it for a touchdown. Second touchdown catch for Jefferson. Third touchdown pass in the quarter for Burrow. 
The extra point good for Cade York, and it's 21 to 7 with a minute 16 to go in the first quarter. They're still working on Kenneth Murray on the sideline. Playing without Ronnie Perkins, their leading sack man. Without starting safety, Larry and Turner yell. That's an addition to injuries that they had earlier in the year. Alex Grinch said, we cannot afford any more injuries on defense, and that one would be to their best player if he can't return. Perks again delivers a stiff arm, turn the corner. Out of bounds, chased out by Jacob Phillips, and Lincoln Riley wants a flag for a late hit as it looked like the tackle extended for a while across the boundary. Does a nice job of getting outside Jacoby Stevens. Pretty good block by the tight end. Jay Braden Willis, he gets outside, and there's what Lincoln Riley won. The tackle clearly outside the white. That's the end of the first quarter. LSU leading 21 to 7, the most first quarter points allowed by Oklahoma this season. You're watching the 2019 Chick fil A Peach Bowl. Ohio State and Clemson, most people seem to think LSU, Ohio State, and Clemson are a cut above this Oklahoma team. So far, it looks like yeah. LSU's a cut above. Well, I think everybody thought those three were a cut above, you know, and, and for Ohio State and Clemson, not only explosive offenses, great quarterbacks, but the two best defenses in college football going at it as well. 21-7 LSU, Jalen Hurts under duress, throws it away. Oklahoma had given up only 42 points in the first quarter in 13 games this year prior to today. LSU got half that many in the first quarter of this Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. LSU is getting pretty consistent pressure from their defensive front. Now, the big guys are not going to really rush the passer great. Chase on is going to do most of that from that outside edge position. But they're forcing Jalen Hurts to leave the pocket, and he's had to throw the football away a few times already in the ballgame. Canby Brooks avoids a couple of tackles and is tackled by Caleb on chase on Christian Fulton the corner had a chance to drop him for a loss and missed Lincoln Riley is the play caller the head coach one of the great offensive minds in football he said the play along the offensive line would be the key today another deep ball C.D. Lamb couldn't run under that one, but Kerry Vincent is a member of the LSU track team as a sprinter, running step for step with him. But he is a safety. He's had cornerback experience, so they got the matchup they wanted again in terms of a their best receiver in the slot against the safety. That ball was thrown a little bit too far outside by Jalen Hurts to make the play. So here's Reeves Munshaw. Words of Coach Riley's had a phenomenal year. This is a beauty. Didn't get a good bounce into the end zone. It goes. So first and ten at the 46. Burrow showing that running ability again. Wisely dives down after a 12-yard gain to the Oklahoma 42 and a first down. This is one of the things that he's done exceptionally well this year is run the football. He makes good decisions when the run. In fact, nearly 50% of the times he does run, the result is that, a first down. He knows when to run, and he doesn't mess around. He goes north and south and gets the yardage he needs. 47% of the time that he runs, he gets a first down. That's the highest percentage. First down's gain via the run in the country at any position. Short Whoa. throw almost intercepted by Trey Brown who stepped in front of Thaddeus Moss. That might have been a pick six. And that was the kind of play that Oklahoma desperately needed. Only 11 takeaways on the season. This one was a chance not only to be a pick but to be a pick six for Trey Brown in a new football game if that would have happened. Alex Grinch, when we mentioned the 11 takeaways, said it makes me want to be physically ill. We'll <laughs> clean it up for family audience. Dinner time in a lot of the country. <laughs> yeah, he just said they had so many dropped interceptions, balls that they've had their hands on that they couldn't come down with. 
Burrow dodges the rush. Going for Jefferson again. It's another touchdown. And he beat Woody Washington newly into the game for the ejected Radley Hiles. Well, Woody Washington, I mean, he was beat right away. He got flat-footed in coverage. Watch Woody Washington just get flat-footed right there. And as soon as that happened, Jefferson ran right by him. And Joe Burrow, I mean, he, he's got that killer instinct. He's going to find the matchup. He's going to find the new guy, and he's going to exploit it. And he did again for a touchdown. Woody Washington, his first pass coverage play of the ball game, and he's exploited for a touchdown. Highly recruited was Washington, four stars out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. But in for a tough spot there. Had just six tackles all year, has not played a lot. Cade York hooks it just inside the left upright. What a half for Justin Jefferson. Been targeted eight times. He has six catches for 136 yards and now three touchdowns. Burrow's thrown four, number one, up by 21. Record setting first half for the LSU Tigers. That last touchdown against the freshman Woody Washington, first time in the game, they went right at him and they're exploiting the matchups, and that's good coaching, good play calling, and good quarterback. This is some trickery. They need a big play, and instead it's intercepted. Picked off by Kerry Vincent, intended for Nick Basquin. It's such a slow-developing play that by the time Jalen threw it, Kerry Vincent had a great chance to just read it from the middle of the field. He's the middle safety. Here he is. Watch him drop into the middle of the field and just read this play develop. They try to sneak fast one down the sideline. The ball's in the air a while, and Kerry Vincent makes a beautiful play on the football. His fourth interception of the season, no question. He possessed it. He was in bounds. And it's a takeaway. That now for LSU's defense, their 17th interception of the season. This is Jalen Hurts' seventh career game in the playoff. That's the first interception he has thrown. Of course, the other six were with Alabama. Burrow on target to Thaddeus Moss. A gain of 11 and a first down to the Oklahoma 44. Again, that is Moss that time working on Woody Washington. And right now, this is this is NFL play calling. Find the matchups that favor you and exploit it. Burrow stepped up into the pocket on target again. Here's Jamar Chase. Tripped up but with a first down at the 30-yard line. Well, they tried to run that same little stunt. This time it's picked up. Joe Burrow knows he's got protection. He steps up in the pocket, but he never lose sight of Jamar Chase, who now makes his first catch in the football game, and it's a huge one on third and 17. 22-yard gain. Burrow deep again on target again. Jefferson again. Touchdown again. Watch the little hesitation by Jefferson. Just a little freeze, freezes Justin Broyles. And then he creates separation, and Joe Burrow says, I'm going to give him a chance. He gets a step on him. He's a bigger guy. I'm going to give him a chance to make a play. And Jefferson comes through. He we scored to four touchdowns in the half. That is the most touchdown scored by any player in the Peach Bowl game. Previous record three shared by many, but he has four receiving on nine catches, 11 targets, 186 yards, and there's a long way to go to the half. Justin Jefferson has not only set the Peach Bowl record, but nobody has ever caught five touchdown passes in any bowl game. He has four already. There have been five others who have caught four touchdown passes in any bowl game. Hurts is three for 12 for 83 and an interception. Kennedy Brooks. Sean, this is a critical drive for Oklahoma to score a touchdown because 
the only chance they have offensively, they're not built to drop back and throw the football every down. They have to run the football, use play action, protect their quarterback. So they've got to get this to 35-14. To, so they stay within the what they can do offensively. If they stay this far behind or even more, it, it really takes them out of the football game. Trying to get the first win ever for the Big 12 Conference in the college football playoff here in year six. Kennedy Brooks tackled by Jacob Phillips. And, and right now, Lincoln Riley's got to be thinking, I got to do two things. We have to run the football. We've got to score a touchdown. And I got to keep my defense off the field. Because right now, we have no answers for LSU's offense. And we're playing undermanned in our secondary. On target to C.D. Lamb is Jalen Hurts. And it's another first down for Oklahoma. Before this drive, he only had the one catch for the 51 yards. He was pretty quiet. Good coverage on him, and now he's up to three catches. And again, he is the guy they got to get the football to. This is where you would expect to see Jalen Hurts run the football. They like to run a lead play where they fake it to the back, and then the quarterback follows the back right up into the hole. Hurts is 18 rushing touchdowns this season. Brooks swung down at the line of scrimmage. Grant Delpit up near the line with help from Richard Lawrence. Yeah, Richard Lawrence really had a quick move inside on that play. I mean, of all those big bodies, I think he's the guy that the last couple of weeks has made the most plays. Very active, plays with a high motor. Nice play there. Now I think they might be getting into their five-man, their their heavy package. They have five of these defensive linemen in here. Maybe a perimeter run is better for Oklahoma with that beef inside. It's a lot of size to try to move. They do run outside. Hurts a nice fake and the touchdown for Oklahoma. Really nice block by C.D. Lamb. They run the just the, the read option. You're going to see a block come in right here by C.D. Lamb on the linebacker. All that beef inside, take it to the edge. Fake the pitch. Jalen Hurts gets here, but a nice block by C.D. Lamb coming from the outside in. One rushing touchdown away from matching the school record by a quarterback. Two-yard run. And the extra point up and good by Gabe Berkich. Can the defense stop this historically good LSU offense? Gabe Berkich kicks off for Oklahoma. And a touchback. Chris Curry weaves through the traffic. He's done a very nice job filling the void for Clyde edwards Elaire, who has played but not very much. That's a 13-yard run and a first down. They love running. It's kind of like an ISO play. They bring the tight end in motion and lead him as a blocker. Oh, On target, wide open receiver. Thaddeus Moss with one man to beat. Touchdown! Pat Fields could not get him down. Pat Fields got Moss. This is a busted coverage, and I'm not sure what the coverage was by Oklahoma. The freshman linebacker, David Uguaybu, was the guy going out to try to reroute the tight end, but then he, he didn't run with him. He put hands on him, didn't run with him, and nobody ran with Thaddeus Moss down the middle of the field. Exactly what could not happen for Oklahoma. The extra point up and good by Cade York. It's a 62-yard touchdown. Burrow to Thaddeus Moss. Here's Moss right here. Uguaybu is going to make contact here, and then nobody's going to run with him. They roll the safety deep. Nobody goes down the slot. And that's just a bust in the Oklahoma coverage to the short side of the field. Jamar Chase drew the corner, Motley. Nobody went deep in the deep third of the field. And again, Joe Burrow does not miss things. If you make a mistake, he sees it and he makes you pay for it. 
You know, going back and seeing that play, if I had to guess who made a mistake there, it was Parnell Motley, the corner. He got caught coming up on the, on the underneath route with Jamar Chase, and that should have been his deep third responsibility, and he turned it over, and again, Joe Burrow made him pay for it. Long throw, incomplete, intended for Charleston Rambo with Derek Stingley in coverage. See, this, again, this is not... Oklahoma is not built with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. Maybe with Baker Mayfield, maybe a little bit with Kyler Murray, but not with Jalen Hurts to just throw the ball every down. I mean, he is more effective, and they are more effective when they run the football. And, uh, right now, they're in a score situation <laughs> where they've got to throw it more than they probably want to. Right up the middle, Hurts. Got rid of it, incomplete for C.D. Lamb. Pressure right in his face. And Hurts had to get rid of it very quickly. Well, Chase on is just creating havoc. I mean, here he is right here. He's going to go inside. There's a little stunt with the tackle. He gets inside the guard. The right guard does not pick him up. And Jalen Hurts does everything just to get rid of the football. Glenn Logan there as well. Neil Von Chase on's having himself a heck of a football game. Missed almost all of last season after he tore his ACL in their opener against Miami. Come back strong this year. Hurts retreating. Look out for the end zone and Chase on. He got it off. It's caught by Jeremiah Hall. But he's miles from a first down. Down at the 20. Needed 15 more. That time they kept the back pledger in to chip on Caleb on chase on but the play did not open up and so when Jalen Hurts left the pocket he was being pursued by chase on. Leaves Munshaw on the punt for the fifth time. Fair catch made by Derek Stingley. And Ty Davis Price in. Yeah, running back now. The freshman out of Baton Rouge, his first carry. Justin Broyles made the tackle. And you know, the good news now for Ed Orgeron is that guy does not need to even put his helmet on anymore. Clyde Edwards Hilaire does not need to play another down. I mean, he has a chance now to heal up completely. He looked good. A couple times he ran the football. They used him as a decoy a couple plays. But there's no reason to take a chance with him and the hamstring in this ball game right now. LSU with one of the most impressive first halves in college football bowl game history. Uh, over 440 yards of offense on that completion to Thaddeus Moss. Ed Orgeron won almost every Coach of the Year award. He won the big ones, the AP, the Home Depot. When we asked him yesterday, what does that mean to you? He said, nothing. He said, nothing? He said, nope, it's Joe Burrow, it's Joe Brady, it's all these great players and coaches and everybody at every level of the operation. Burrow is a man wide open. It's Jamar Chase with a first down near the 10. Justin Broyles called upon to make another tackle. That's a 38-yard play. This looks just like one of the plays we showed in the open. A team decides to rush three and drop eight. Joe Burrow sees that. He'll just buy time. He'll just wait and wait. Keeps his eyes downfield and waits for one of his key receivers to uncover. And it was Jamar Chase, 38 yards down the field. He had a defender fall down. Will he throw seven touchdown passes in the half? Not on this play. Ty Davis Price inside the five-yard line. Now this is this is perfect situation for LSU. There's a minute 14 and counting. They've got two timeouts. They're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. A chance to go into halftime with another touchdown. Burrow fakes it. Throws wide open. Touchdown. Terrace Marshall this time. Same play, they scored a touchdown against Georgia in the SEC Championship. It's a bunch formation, and Terrace Marshall looks like he's going to block and then just kind of slips out. Watch Terrace Marshall right here. He's going to come in here and just kind of look like he's going to block, goes back out. Oklahoma goes with the play fake, and it's wide open. Exact same play they scored on in this building just a few weeks ago. 
too easy. It's too easy for Joe Burrow. We'll almost have 100 in the first half. That's the 49th point, the extra point from Cade York. 495 yards of offense for LSU in the half. And it's 49 to 14 for the Tigers. Here's Laura Rutledge. Coach, you're undermanned in your secondary, but what defensive adjustments need to happen for the second half? We need to run the calls. You know, they're a good enough team as it is. To give them credit. They've made a lot of nice plays, but we busted way too many calls, both sides of the ball. A lot of opportunities that we haven't made, and we got to do a better job. What will you say to these guys when you go into halftime now? That exactly. You know, that exactly. That there's opportunities out there. Uh, we're a lot better team than that. We need to play like it. Thanks, Coach. To Holly with Coach O. Coach Marjoran, some extracurricular activity after that play. A lot of guys being restrained. What do you say to your guys to keep their composure right now? Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want anybody to get kicked out of the game. We want to play with a disciplined football team. We got 30 minutes left to go. We want a clean game. How do you describe the magic you're seeing between Joe Burrow and his wideouts right now? Yeah, guys are ready. A great job by Steve Ensmanger, who's went through a tragedy today of calling the game. He's the MVP right now. Is Clyde done for the day, likely? Probably so. Thank you, Coach. No Tigers. <laughs> Don't know the last time we've heard him finish a conversation without that. We'll send you to the studio for the Mazda Halftime Report after these messages. You're watching the 2019 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl from Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Joe Burrow said during the week, these are indeed the games he dreamed about playing in when he was a kid, but what he did and what his team did in the first half had to be beyond <laughs> his or anyone's wildest dreams. Todd Blackledge, 49 points. He threw seven touchdown passes in the half. That matches the record for a game in any bowl game. Yeah. But they had, they had eight possessions, right? They punted once. Eight possessions, seven touchdowns, and one punt. Doing it without, for the most part, Clyde edwards Elaire, who uh, played a couple plays, but pretty much a non-factor in the ball game, did not slow LSU down whatsoever. Gabe Burkich kicks off. High and returnable for Jontre Kirkland. And he'll be stopped just across the 25-yard line. So Joe Burrow, the Heisman Trophy winner, 21 for 27 for 403 and seven touchdown passes. And we mentioned that you kind of feel like you're shortchanging Jefferson and some of the other guys on that offense who deserve a little spotlight right here and right now. Yeah, and also that offensive line. We mentioned that they were the Joe Moore Award winners. They lost one of their best players uh, in, in uh, you know, their, their right guard early in the game, and they just continued to play and protect Joe Burrow. So you got to give them credit as well the pass protection that he's had in the ballgame. Chris Curry squirts ahead for three. If you're wondering, the NCAA record for touchdown passes in a game, any game, bowl game, otherwise, in major college football is 11 by David Klingler for Houston. <laughs> He'll against run against Eastern Washington in 1990, a game that the Cougars won 84 to 21. And if he stays in long enough to play, if you watch the first half, you'd have to think that's a possibility today. Burroughs pass batted down, trying to get it to Jamar Chase. And Parnell Motley broke it up. Here's Holly Rowe. Thinking about that composure and poise of Joe Burrow, when we talked to offensive coordinator Steve Ensminger about what makes him special, he said, number one, his toughness. He is so tough, he takes hits, and that rubs off on the rest of the guys. They feed off of that when he gets those hits and gets back up. But the number two thing that makes him so good is his poise. He never gets rattled, so we never get rattled. That's exactly what you guys are talking about. Yeah. He's just calm, cool, and collected, and that's why the offense moves just like that. Never looks flustered. I mean, even when he's getting hit, even when the pack pocket gets collapsed, he never looks like he's lost his cool. Throwing deep, caught. Terrace Marshall all the way to the 25-yard line see, of Oklahoma. See, all he knows right now is they can't cover my guys. So even if they're in position, I'm still going to throw the football where my guys can make plays because they're not making plays on the football the way my guys are. First and 10 LSU opening possession of the second half. Leading 49 to 14 behind seven touchdown passes from Joe Burrow in the first half. Chris Curry bounced off the pile. 
And wound up gaining about five. Pat Fields got him down. Who do you like in that second game tonight? That should be uh, one of the best, you would think, in the six-year yeah. history of the playoffs. Certainly one of the most anticipated. I really think it's a coin flip. I really do. I mean, if I had to choose, it's hard for me to go against Clemson and, and Trevor Lawrence. It, it really is. I think Ohio State, most people think, has been one of the most complete teams, if not the most complete team all year. But I think... I think Clemson is playing their best football right now. I think Trevor Lawrence is playing his best football, and uh, it's hard for me to go against them. You know, they haven't lost in a long time. 28 straight yeah. wins. They could tie Florida State's ACC record with another win tonight. Chris Curry gets the first down just inside the two-yard line. Of course, Joe Burrow will be watching, and undoubtedly he'll be cheering for Ohio State. He said he harbors no ill will. Toward the Buckeyes had a great experience there. He wants a rushing touchdown, and he has it. He's thrown for seven, and now he's rushed for one. We kind of got a double push from Justin Jefferson and Chris Curry. Good blocking on the right side of the line. They watch Jefferson and Curry both get behind him and help him into the end zone. Now, that is a play I definitely would not have run <laughs> in this situation. You, you really want him to take a yeah, shot it's at a pretty the goal safe line play. with the score like this when you're on your way to play for a national title? Go, a quarterback sneaks a safe play. You're low to the ground, you're going down low. You're not going to take a direct shot Okay, on that play. spoken like a six foot five inch quarterback. <laughs> a great college quarterback, a first round pick, academic All-American. Extra point good. Mr. Football in Ohio and Gatorade Ohio Player of the Year. He was also an All-State point guard in basketball. Turned down some mid-major scholarship offers to play Division I basketball. C.D. Lamb high stepping across midfield and chopped down at the 46-yard line by Cameron Lewis, a backup junior from Monroe, Louisiana. He had a nice year last year, Burrow. We'll get back to it. Oh, no. let's watch this play. It's just a great route. He he ran inside and came back out on Kerry Vincent Jr. Did a beautiful job finding some space, and he's not had a lot of space in the ball game. Hurts incomplete, intended for Charleston Rambo, and Christian Fulton broke it up. For a long time, it looked like Joe Burrow was going to go to Cincinnati. Luke yeah, Fickle, that's right. The relatively new head coach at Cincinnati had been at Ohio State for a long time, and Joe took a visit down to the Bayou and just felt so comfortable. He and his family believed in Coach O. Coach O promised him. He said, we can't do it this year, but we're going to change the offense. Make it more in tune with today's passing attacks. He lived up to that promise, Jeremiah Hall. I think Coach O. I think Coach O taught him how to eat crawfish too. I think he kind of liked that. Well, I mean that would you know. I think it's hard to know who's more popular right now in the state right. of Louisiana, right? Coach O or <laughs> Joe Burrow? Unbelievable. They could both be elected to anything they wanted to be. Ed Ogeron, Louisiana native, Rose, Louisiana, grew up an LSU fan. It's not just about second chances for Joe Burrow. It's about that for Coach O as well. Yeah. Got a chance to be the head coach at Ole Miss. Three very tough years there. Won only 10 games. He admitted he didn't do a good job. It was too hard on the people around him. You can't coach the whole team like defensive linemen, which was his position group for much of his career as an assistant. That's Austin Stogner with the catch. Then he was at USC. He's the interim coach. They go 6-2. and two. He thinks he's going to get that job. He does it. He was devastated. Wound up at LSU as an assistant. They dismiss Les Miles. He gets the interim job again, goes six and two again. But at the end of that year, there's all kinds of speculation that Tom Herman was going to be the coach. The very successful coach at the University of Houston who opted for Texas instead. Charleston Rambo near the first down line and stopped by Kerry Vincent. So what a story it is. I mean, here's a guy who, you know, relatively late in his career gets the chance to have his dream job wasn't yeah. sure he's going to keep it he kept it and you can't be happier for somebody I mean, to have your dream job and have it go like this yep is awesome grant thought he might be a part of shadowing helping to double cover cd lamb if it was necessary today jalen hurts the ball carrier down after a short gain there's the fort bend express 
Texas State champs. They are in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. I, I'm just trying to figure out how you have a travel football team in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Because it's Texas. I guess. I guess. The 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 seven on seven teams I understand, but the travel, the the travel sixth, seventh, and eighth, that's pretty incredible incredible. Delpit. Big part of the history of defensive backs now at LSU. They call themselves DBU, and understandably so. P.J. Pledger wrestled down by Jacob Phillips, lost his helmet. He's LSU's leading tackler for the season, a junior from Nashville. Grant Delpit told us when he won the Thorpe Award, he was slightly surprised because he was injured for a lot yeah. of the year with a, a bad ankle. First person to text him was Patrick Peterson, now with the Arizona Cardinals. Who won that award for LSU back in 2010. Morris Claiborne won it the next year. Uh, they've had a lot of great safeties who didn't win that award, and he right. felt very honored, very privileged to be one who did. Tyron Matthew, one of those, although he did win the Bednarik Award. I want to leave out our colleague Ryan Clark. We uh, are going to miss several because they've had many, many greats. Jalen Hurts avoided the rush. Trying to pick up a block, lunging point. for the pylon. Touchdown. Yeah, just a great play by Jalen Hurts. Eluding the rush. I mean, Jacoby Stevens came unblocked. Watch Jacoby Stevens. He's going to come right here unblocked. And Jalen Hurts has got to escape from him, first of all. He does that. He gets a little bit of a block from Rambo, not really. <laughs> just got in the way a little bit. But he knew how to get that football to the pylon. And the AT&T pylon camera gave us a great shot of it right there. Well, he uses himself the word unprecedented. He's, he's said that many times in describing his journey and, you know, the success he had at Alabama and then what happened to him there and then the success he's had here. And it really is unprecedented. And a nice touchdown run here on fourth down shows you his competitive fire. A distinguished club of 30 touchdown passes and 20 rushing touchdowns in one season. Tim Tebow, Cam Newton, Lamar Jackson, Heisman Trophy winners all. And of course, Jalen Hurts, the runner-up this year for the Heisman to Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow still out there. With his team up by 35 and three minutes and change to go in the third quarter. He's on target again. Short of the first down. Just to follow up what you were saying and what Laura was reporting on. I exchanged text messages with John Harbaugh this morning. And I said, how about Jalen Hurts? Maybe as a backup to Lamar Jackson. I mean, nobody's going to beat out Lamar Jackson. At least right. not next year. And they like all their quarterbacks. They have our G3 there. He said, would think a good idea. Haven't really watched him, but I know he's a great player. Yeah. He'll watch him some more. Yeah. The, I mean, doesn't make sense if that's the offense you're going to run. Right. Have another have guy. Another guy who can do that. He's not as fast as Lamar Jackson. Yeah. And he's a much improved thrower, as we have talked about all day long. And kudos to John Harbaugh, Greg Roman, and that staff. You know, they've crafted an offense. Coaching is about taking advantage of the skill set of right. players. That's what the Ravens have done. That is what LSU has done. This season, Stephon Sullivan, the first down, They're the first team in the history of the SEC with a 4,000 yard passer and a 1,000 yard rusher and two 1,000 yard receivers. <laughs> I know. But I would be surprised if we see Mr. Burrow in the Now, this quarter. has to be his, his last hurrah here. His dad, Jimmy, retired from coaching to come watch his son play. Boy, was that a good decision. They've been at all the games this year. Justin Jefferson, <laughs> Robin Burrow wanted yeah. another touchdown. Well, they had the matchup again. Inside slot against Justin Broyles, a safety. That one just a little bit wide on the throw by Joe Burrow. Bench him immediately. <laughs> did you see the feature on the Burrows on game day this morning? I did not, no. You know, it was very emotional when Robin Burrow talked about, you know, Jimmy Burrow's decision to walk away. Very highly regarded coach, 15 years, the defensive coordinator of Ohio U with Frank Solich. Ty Davis Price got rocked around a bit. Made his way to the 23-yard line. Well, we go to the fourth quarter. 56-21 for the number one team in the country.
We're back in Atlanta, the 2019 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. College football playoff semifinal number one, dominated by LSU, leading 56 to 21, with 623 yards of total offense through three quarters for the national coach of the year, Ed Ogeron, who's going to bring his team to New Orleans on January 13th, yeah. about an hour from their campus, depending on how you drive. Play at Ohio State or Clemson for the yeah. national title. And they got still Burrow still in and mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson. I think they're going to try for one more connection between those two guys. Oh, well, he fumbles the football. And now a battle for it, and LSU got it back. Looked like Ed Ingram recovered it, the guard. And that play right there would be enough right. to get Absolutely. Joe Burrow out of the game. Well, they get away with a face mask right there that should have been called. He readjusts himself. And then he loses the football as he's hit from behind by Jalen Redman. But yeah, the hit after the fumble. Try the field goal here. I don't think we'll see any more of those guys. You do a great job at Media Day just getting down and dirty with the kickers. You know, don't you? no one talks to the kickers. Yeah. They sit there all by themselves. Well, you and you never know if it might come down to a game deciding kick. I think that seems unlikely here today. But you have the stories if you need them. Well, oops. Cole Tracy told him to try to keep it between the uprights. I mean, how about this young man? He's 18. They go to Alabama. It's a tight game. He goes two for two with two field goals of 40 plus. That was a 46 yard attempt off the left upright. Plenty of legs. Just stayed out to the left. That was some of your best analysis. Thank you. Right <laughs> but these kicking clinics, they rate kickers and punters around the country. A lot of the colleges rely on that. Good throw by Jalen Hurts. Theo Weiss, another one of those very highly recruited freshman wide receivers. He's out of Allen, Texas. He was an Under Armour All-American and a four-star recruit. He has a gain of 21. My thought, and most people thought, it was going to be a long shot for Oklahoma to win the game. But to me, Todd, they lost it really before they ever got here. Yeah. You know, when their leading sacker, Ronnie Perkins, their backup running back, Ramondre Stevenson, their suspended Trajan Bridges, special teams player, backup wide receivers, Hazelwood, Kalaren Turner Yell gets hurt. You know, they, they just didn't have enough depth to overcome yeah. that. And it's just from a karma standpoint, it felt like uh, a bad vibe. We talked to Alex Rich yesterday. He said, you know, I, I'm, I worry that our lack of depth will yeah. be exposed on defense. And that, that yeah. came to Especially in the secondary. That's where he was most concerned. And, and that's where they've been hurt the most in the ballgame today. No reasons given for the suspensions. As Laura Rutledge mentioned earlier, that was a big hit. They certainly right hurt. I don't know whether it would have made a huge difference, but they would have been more competitive yeah. with three or four of their best players. Absolutely. I mean, your second leading tackler, your leading rusher. Here's the, the hit at the end of the play. Jacob Phillips, the leading tackler. And uh, again, in the fourth quarter of a game like this, those, those are the kind you feel. I know that Jalen Hurts is a tough guy, and his durability, when we asked, Lincoln Riley about it. he says it's it's different it's very different his durability that he can come back week in and week out after running the football and taking hits like that very unusual young man it's been a record setting night for him as well he's on target to Nick Basquin with uh, Jalen Hurts is 39 yards rushing he has passed there's the backup quarterback Miles Brennan warming up for LSU he's passed Jack Mildred for the single season rushing yards marked by a quarterback. They've had a lot of great running quarterbacks at Oklahoma. Mildred's mark had lasted since 1971. And with Jalen's two rushing touchdowns tonight, that's 20, tying Mildred's record from the same season for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. All right. It's just about to the edge. Damone Clark throws him down with the whistles blowing. A lot of starters still in the ball game defensively for LSU. Fourth down and two for Oklahoma. Hurts with time has his receiver. 
It's Drake Stoops, and he's to the goal line and loses the ball. I actually thought his knee was down before he even got towards the end zone. That's the call. The official, the far side of the field, running in. I mean, regardless of who came up with the football, I thought his knee was down before the ball came out. We talked to Lincoln Riley about Drake Stoops earlier this year. Said he's a playmaker. Yeah. He's trying to make a play, get in the end zone. The runner's knee was down. The ball just inside the one yard line. It'll be first and goal for Oklahoma from that spot. Please reset the game clock to 10 minutes and one second. 10:01 and started on my signal. You know the thing that gets lost too, and we brought the point up when we had Oklahoma Thank a couple you. weeks ago in the Big 12 championship game, but. You know, you look at the guys before him that both won Heisman trophies, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray. They had multiple years in this system with Lincoln Riley. The guys that are coming after, whether it's Tanner Mordecai, Spencer Rattler, they'll have multiple years with Lincoln Riley. He had less than one year. I mean, he got here late. He had to absorb a whole new system, new teammates, new league, new everything. And what he did in that amount of time is, is really pretty remarkable. A voted team captain. That's the thing that meant the most to Jalen. T.J. Pledger, the touchdown for Oklahoma. And Jalen Hurts said, yeah, have we? We've talked to him a number of times. It almost sounded as if he was saying of all the things he's accomplished, he was most proud of that. Yeah. That in a short period of time, he had earned the respect and belief of yeah. his new teammates to be a captain. Well, I'll guarantee you who he earned the respect of right away, the strength coach. Anywhere he goes in a weight room, I mean, he does impressive things in the weight room. And that is a... 600-pound-plus squatter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that gets people's attention. That's a late day for him. Gabe Burkich, still no announcer whammy. Trying to finish the season without missing a kick. No kicker in Oklahoma has ever done that. You're watching the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. What a day for Joe Burrow. 493 yards. That is his career high, passing the 489. He threw for it Ole Miss in mid-November. The total yards, the eight touchdowns responsible for seven touchdown passes and one rushing. Both single game records in the college football playoff now in its sixth year. The seven touchdown passes matching the most that anybody's ever thrown in a bowl game. And by the way, now 55 touchdown passes for the year. Only one man has ever thrown more in a season, a season in major college football. Colt Brennan of Hawaii, the record 58 2006. There are only seven men who have ever thrown 50 or more in a season. Here's Miles Brennan now in at quarterback, the backup. He hands it off to Chris Curry. Brennan, a sophomore from Long Beach, Mississippi. He was a top prospect coming out of high school. Not a lot of playing time this year behind Joe Burrow. But for Chris Curry, that was his 12th carry of the game. He had 10 game appearances in his career coming into today, but the most he ever carried in a game was six times. So he's doubled that today in relief of Clyde Edwards Elaire. And, you know, for them now, they've got almost two weeks to get him. 100% Clyde Edwards Elaire, such a big part, a critical part of their offense. And really, regardless of who wins that game tonight in the desert, they both have outstanding defensive football teams. The Curry's look good. And he's refusing to go down. And he gets a little help from Torrey Carter. And wound up at the 49 yard line. <laughs> Clyde Edwards Elaire loves it. Well, we've had the return of beast mode in the NFL this week, and that was reminiscent of Marshawn Lynch. Right now, LSU wants to run the football, run the clock, use as much of the play clock as they can. And imagine they snap it inside of 10 seconds on the play clock at all the rest of this football game. Derek Dillon again. You saw the big smile on his face after the catch a moment ago. He has a first down. Woody Washington made the tackle. That's 667 yards of offense for LSU. That is a team record in the college football playoff. Oregon at 639 against Florida State January 1st of 2015. 
one of the oddities taught about the playoff Reese Davis mentioned this on game day this morning semifinals are not very competitive right. they have not been In the first five years prior to this obviously 10 semifinal games only two decided by single digits I think we're going to have a close one tonight We're in the Valley I of the Sun, so Ohio State and Clemson Ryan Day trying to remain undefeated as a head coach Larry Coker of Miami the last to go undefeated in his first full season as a head coach you know we, we talked about this at our production meeting it's pretty amazing when you consider Ed Orgeron and all four of the head coaches very unique how they all got here Ed Orgeron was an interim coach got promoted wasn't necessarily the first choice or the flashiest choice turned out to be a great hire Dabo Sweeney same thing was an interim coach when Ter uh, when uh, Bowden was fired and he took over and then uh, Terry Don Phillips the athletic director made him he was only been a, a wide receiver coach never been a coordinator made Dabo Sweeney the head coach he's had an incredible record a couple national championships Ryan Day Lincoln Riley both guys were hired to be offensive coordinators the guy ahead of them decided to retire before people thought they would and they promoted from within and all four guys have been phenomenal hires mm -hmm. and uh, Lincoln Riley was little known. That's right. And Bob Stoops took him from East Carolina, where he was an offensive coordinator, to be the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. And all he's done is have the, the best first year start, <laughs> second year start, and three year start in Oklahoma history in terms of number of wins. Unfortunately, he's going to end the third year in a row at 12 and 2. Racy McMath down to the six yard line. Nice throw by Brennan. And that's at a school, Oklahoma. You know, well, they've had some of the. What schools had more legendary coaches yeah, than Oklahoma? Right. Bud Wilkinson and Benny Owen and Chuck Fairbanks and Barry Switzer. And we mentioned Bob Stoops. John Emery into the end zone. Highly recruited true freshman. I think he thought he'd be more involved in the absence of Edwards E. Lair, who'd be just tuning in, played sparingly. The good news for LSU didn't aggravate that hamstring injury. Uh, Emery said the other day in the local paper here, this is going to be my coming out part. Yeah. Not quite yet. He, no. he's, he's a highly recruited guy. He's a great speed. Probably the, the most speed of those other three running backs that we've seen tonight. How about the story that Lincoln Riley told us yesterday that when he was at East Carolina, he thinks he was the first guy to offer Joe Burrow a scholarship? Yes. He said <laughs> they had played against Jimmy Burrow in the Beef O'Brady Bowl. Yeah. Wow. Avery Atkins' leg needs to be getting a little tired right now, one would think. Jalen Hurts to finish his career. 38 and 4 as a starting quarterback. 26 and 2. That Alabama. They Spencer love. Rattler is the new quarterback. He was the number one quarterback prospect according to most of the ratings. Out of Phoenix, Arizona. True freshman out of Pinnacle High School. They love the way he can throw the football. I mean, I remember when we were there for the first game in August. And talking to some people around there said, I mean, it's there's really no comparison who throws it the best. I mean, because Tanner Mordecai is also a, a promising quarterback backing up Jalen Hurts, but this guy is the guy who could spin it the best. He wants those signals and he wants them now, too. He's ready to go. <laughs> Here's Tanner Mordecai, redshirt freshman, Waco, Texas. Well, because of the success that they're having, when I mean, you have back to back Heisman Trophy winners, and then the third guy hurts as a runner up. You're going to be able to recruit some quarterbacks into this system. Rattler slides down. Of course, the big question in Oklahoma now will be the future of Lincoln Riley. Yeah. When we met with him yesterday, Holly Rowe said, We have to ask you the annual question Are you going to the NFL? And his answer was, I don't think so. And we said, Well, that's not a no. And he said, Well, it's about as close to a no as it can possibly be. I'm very happy here. Well compensated, reportedly makes more than six million dollars a year, but his name has certainly come up frequently in the speculation regarding the future of the Dallas Cowboys head coaching job. Rattler, six feet, 
191 pounds, took a hit as he got it off. Drake Stoops could not hang on. Apparently, there's some speculation about Lincoln Riley here in Atlanta, too, because in the paper this morning, in the articles about the Falcons' decision to retain Dan Quinn, as well, I guess you can cross Lincoln Riley off the Falcons' list then. Well, he's always going to be on everybody's list mm -hmm. because he's very innovative, he's creative. NFL guys, you know, they come to Norman to visit with him to, to understand some of the things they're doing. And uh, so he's always going to be somebody that people are going to go after. Uh, there's no question. And he's going to have to answer that question year in and year out. Well, he's won 36 games in three years as a head coach. The only coaches in the history of major college football who won more than their first three seasons coached in the 1800s. Walter Camp, one of the inventors of football, went 41 and 2 at Yale, and George Woodruff of Penn. That's it. <laughs> high on that throw by Rattler on fourth and four Lincoln Riley trying to go for it give his young quarterback a little more of a possession well Oklahoma will be 0 and 4 in the playoff they will have given up at least 37 points in all four of those appearances the defense was better this year hurt certainly by the depletions of the roster in this game but hurt more by the amazing array of talent on the other side of the ball. And LSU is going home to New Orleans to play for a national championship on January 13th. LSU 14 and 0 for the first time in school history. The only other time they were 13 and 0, they lost the national championship game to Alabama. God bless the Ensminger family and Carly McCord's family, and may she rest in peace. Certainly a very emotional day, Holly, for Ed Ogeron and this LSU team. That's right, Coach Ogeron, you're taking your team back to Louisiana for a chance at a national championship. How does that sink into you right now? You know, it hasn't sunk in yet. I'm just very proud of our football team, very proud of our coaching staff, very proud. Hey, where'd you go, my man? Yeah, congratulations to you. Very proud of everybody in our organization. I think he's going to sing in tonight. We're going to enjoy this victory, and then we're going to press on. How proud are you of your team? It's been award season, lots of awards, lots of individual acclaim, that yeah. they could focus in on this moment and get this done today. You know, we didn't, we, we didn't skip a beat. We didn't blink. We put it aside. We focused in our task at hand. We came here. This is a playoff game. This is not a bowl. Our team was very focused. We got great leadership and great coaches. For a boy from La Rose, Louisiana, what does it feel like to go across the bayou and play for a national title? You know, it's something we always dreamed about. It's going to be a special night for everybody in Louisiana, but this is always going to be about the team. Coach, I know it was a heartbreaking day for the team today. What did you say to your kids and to Coach Ensminger before this game? You know, uh, Coach Ensminger and I addressed it. We didn't have a long time to talk, but he's getting the game ball tonight. What a tremendous, tremendous LSU Tiger. He called a great game tonight. Thank you very much, Coach. And now let's check in with Laura Rutledge. All right, thanks, Holly. Joe, you're responsible for eight touchdowns in this game, seven of them in the first half alone. You dreamed of playing on stages like this. What was it like tonight? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, but this was, this was expected from us. You know, we expected to be here from the jump. And, you know, we've worked so hard for this moment. We just got to finish it off. You mentioned finishing it off. You will go now to New Orleans to play for a national championship. You've had your name spelled in the Cajun spelling on your back. You've carried this state on your shoulders. What will this mean to you? This is going to be a lot of fun. You know, we've worked for this for a long time. I know Coach O is ready for it. Our team will be ready for it. All right, thanks. Thank Congrats. you. Well, it's hard to chronicle all the records set today. Here are many of them. Seven touchdown passes, one touchdown running for Joe Burrow. He threw for 403 in the first half. Finished the game with 493. Justin Jefferson had four receiving touchdowns all in the first half. Set the Peach Bowl record, college football playoff record for receiving yards as well. 
49 points and a half, 63 points in a game, 692 yards of total offense before a Peach Bowl record crowd of 78,347. Final score, LSU 63, Oklahoma 28 for Todd Holly and Laura Sean McDonough. So long from Atlanta, now to Reese Davis in Glendale, Arizona at the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl.